All right, let's talk about a new electric supercar that just completely rewrote the rules of speed. I mean, it didn't just break a world record, it absolutely shattered it. And in doing so, it kind of raised a huge question for the entire car industry. 496 kilometers per hour. That's over 308 miles per hour. I mean, that is faster than a lot of high-speed trains. It's a number that honestly seemed impossible for a production EV until right now. So the big question is, how on earth did they do it? To really get how this happened, you gotta look beyond the car itself. The story really kicks off with a massive, multi-billion dollar investment and a mission that is way, way bigger than just manufacturing. See, this isn't just about stamping out cars. BYD is pouring billions into building professional-grade racetracks all across China. Their goal is to build an entire car culture from the ground up. And, you know, if you're gonna do that, you need a halo car, a car that truly inspires passion. And man, their journey to the top was just unbelievably fast. From the moment it debuted, the U9 just kept getting better at this blistering pace. But even after they set new records in Germany, the team still faced some skepticism. Some critics basically just shrugged and said the results were okay. Well, you can bet that comment just added fuel to the fire. So, to be the absolute best, the engineering team knew they had to solve a really fundamental physics problem. They wanted to master two completely different, and frankly, often contradictory, goals at the very same time. Think of it like this. A top speed run? That's a 100-meter dash. It's all about pure, overwhelming power in a straight line. But a fast lap time? That's like a triathlon. It demands a perfect blend of power, braking, agility, cornering, endurance, the whole shebang. Engineering one car to be the world's best of both is a monumental challenge. So to win that sprint, to beat the best, their math told them they needed something just staggering, 3,000 horsepower. To put that into perspective for you, a single wheel on the U9 Extreme has about the same horsepower as an entire traditional supercar. Just let that sink in. But you know, it's not as simple as just adding more power. Pushing that much electrical current through a system generates an insane amount of heat. We're talking system killing levels of heat. It's a thermal nightmare. The solution is to increase the voltage. Now, most high-performance EVs top out around 800 or 900 volts. BYD's breakthrough was developing its own stable, mass-producible 1,000-volt-plus platform. That was the key that unlocked everything. Okay, so you've got this incredible power on tap. Now what? The next question was even tougher. How do you actually control it all? How do you take those raw numbers and turn them into record-breaking performance on the track? Well, the answer came down to a few core technologies that were all deeply woven together. The whole thing is built on this foundation they call Yi Zifang. So instead of one or two motors, it has four, one for each wheel. This means the car can control the power and torque going to each individual wheel with just unbelievable precision. It's like giving the car four separate, super smart brains, all working together. And the benefits in the real world? They're huge. Over 60% of the car's braking is handled by the motors themselves, which saves the actual brakes and recaptures a ton of energy. But the most important feature is how fast it reacts. The system can adjust torque 10 to 20 times faster than any mechanical setup, which gives it incredible stability. And get this, this was proven for real when a test driver had a tire blowout at nearly 300 kilometers an hour and the car just stayed perfectly straight, stable, incredible. All right. Let's talk battery, because this is where the team made a really interesting kind of counterintuitive choice. Instead of going for a lighter ternary lithium battery, they chose their own heavier LFP blade battery. Now, why would they do that? Well, because it can handle 20 degrees more heat, it keeps performing well even when the charge is low, it lasts longer, and critically, it's just fundamentally safer. All things you absolutely want when you're pushing to the extreme. And then there's the air. At speeds over 360 kilometers an hour, air resistance isn't just a force, it's like hitting a physical wall. The problem is, wind tunnels can't accurately simulate these kinds of conditions, so the team had no choice but to go out and do countless real-world runs, gathering data, constantly tweaking their aerodynamic models and control software. So, after all of that, all the innovation, the engineering, the relentless testing, what were the official results? First, the big one a new top speed of 496 kilometers per hour. This wasn't just fast, it was a new world record for a production electric vehicle. Officially the fastest EV on the planet, period. But hey, remember that whole sprinter versus triathlete thing? They didn't just smash the sprinter's record. They also lapped the legendary Nürburgring Nordschleife in six minutes and 59 seconds. 
that is a full 18 seconds faster than their record from just one year before. That's not just an improvement, that's a colossal leap. But you know, the numbers are one thing. This story tells you everything you need to know about the team's mindset. After setting their previous records in Germany, management offered them a big celebratory dinner. The engineers refused. They said it wasn't time to celebrate, it was time to analyze the data and plan the next round of tests. That is just relentless dedication. Okay, so this all raises a really fair question, right? When the highway speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, why does any of this matter? Why push a car to these absolutely insane limits? Well, the answer is all about how technology trickles down. Think about it. 20 years ago, the average train was chugging along at 65 kilometers an hour. Today, high-speed rail zips by at 350, and it has completely transformed how we live and work. It's the exact same idea here. The extreme tech developed for these supercars, the safer batteries, the more efficient motors, the smarter control software, that eventually becomes the standard in the cars we all drive tomorrow. So in the end, pushing the boundaries this far, it isn't really about setting records or bragging rights. It's about building a safer, more efficient, and more capable future for everyone on the road. It really proves that when the performance ceiling gets pushed this high, it means the floor for everyone else is about to rise.